Good morning. Did you sleep well? Well, let's uh, start this beautiful day with prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for this day. For this day, we say, Jesus, come. Holy Spirit, come. Manifest yourself, Lord. Thank you. We worship you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's uh, start uh, this day. Uh, continuing with our first Corinthians, I'm going to try to cover five verses. It's all about Lord's Supper, part one. Uh, a lot to cover, especially in the light of the book that I read on Soren Kierkegaard. Soren Kierkegaard um, wrote a book um, on Lord's Supper, <laughs> believe it or not. And so I was reading that and I was so blessed. And Paul talks about it extensively because first Corinthians were making a mess out of a beautiful tradition, a beautiful uh, spiritual exercise that we could be engaged in into a, a massive chaos uh, where the rich were having a feast and poor or going hungry at a church on Sunday. Well, I don't know if it was Sunday, but uh, the day that they were celebrating. So this is word of the Lord. When you come together, therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. And new revised standard version said, when you come together, it's not really to eat Lord's Supper. <laughs> because Lord's Supper was not meant to be that way, right? Um, Jude one twelve says, these men are hidden reefs in your love feast, shamelessly feasting with you, but shepherding only themselves. They are clouds without water, carrying along the wind, fruitless trees in autumn, twice dead after being uprooted. Wow, strong words. Verse 21, for in eating, everyone taken before, other his own supper, and one is hungry, other is drunk. So what's going on? A supper means supper, <laughs> dinner, uh, or meal, actually. It's an afternoon or evening meal. So supper does not necessarily mean dinner. It could mean lunch, or just major meal. A certain part of the world, a dinner is not really celebrated as we do in America, which would be the major meal. You eat it and go to sleep and get fat. So for example, Poland, uh, Jane and I, we traveled and it was, we're, it was very tired. Um, check into hotel, supper time came, dinner time came for us. Uh, but our host just dropped us, dropped us off at the hotel and said, okay, I will see you tomorrow. I'm like, something's not right here. What do we do? Because they don't really eat supper. Um, so we had to find some kind of restaurant and have, share a meal. Yeah, it's just culturally different. But so here it's not necessarily... Um, dinner. Now, pulpit commentary says the abuse rolls from the connection of the Lord's Supper with agape or love feast, the social gathering of Christian brothers to which each, as in Greek, aronai or club feast, contribute his share. So basically, it was a potluck or in our Berkeley days, grace luck or, oh no, it was called pot grace. We don't believe in luck, let's grace one another, let's gift each other, especially student days. Uh, some married couple will bring a feast and married students will bring drink or chips and we would really have a feast. That was wonderful tradition, Thursday meal at Unitas. The Christian, kind of fraternity group, Christian uh, community that I lived in. 
Verse 22, what? Do you not have house in which to eat and drink? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those impoverished believers who have nothing? What would I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? In this, I will not praise you. Love amplified. <laughs> so direct. Um, with all this own cultural nuance. But the message is very clear. You don't live for yourself. You live for others. Um, if you go back to their time, and that is, it's not even 2,000 years ago, just 150 years ago, okay? just 200 years ago. Look at the oil painting of uh, artists describing uh, seven sin of the church. And one of them was gluttony. Seven sin was gluttony. And the way that they describe gluttony, when you look at it, you'll be shocked because everyone in modern time would be gluttonous to at a level that is not acceptable because uh, I saw a picture, oil painting, two oil paintings, one uh, both on gluttony. One basically had people drinking like animal, you know, like with a jug, cup this big, and eat. there's a, one guy eating a ham, um, and the servants bringing the food. But uh, when you look at the table, <laughs> it was such a simple meal. It was basically had ham, bread, fruit, and that's it. And some maybe vegetable. And so I'm thinking, wow, that if you invite a guest today and serve that, uh, people will be quite upset and uh, they may feel like, oh, are they trying to humiliate me? You know, I mean, if it's a, it was a party, because I mean, just think about uh, when people have a party, it, let's say Thanksgiving or Christmas or birthday. I mean, basically you gotta have, some people have meat, poultry, chicken, uh, and all kinds of bread, vegetables, fruits, overflow. So the teaching of the church was not so much um, you should, uh, controlling the amount of food because to them there was gluttonous because there are people going hungry outside. Why, why do you eat yourself? Why, how come I only see three people eating, that's your family or I only see four people eating and serve and serving. Um, the, the, the teaching was that you cannot do that. It's gluttonous. But this love feast supposedly is meant to share the food has become a demonstration. It's like, hey, guess what? What we are eating. And, and so it was very competitive sort of thing where the poor was excluded. Um, so Amplified Bibles is true. What? Do you not have houses in which to eat and drink? Or do you show content for the church of God and humiliate those impoverished believers who have nothing? What would I say to you? Should I praise you for this? In this, I will not praise you. Let's zoom out. Uh, Let's see this whole dynamic globally. And Paul probably didn't know this was happening 2,000 years ago. And some of you are unaware that uh, 3,000 kids died today because of hunger-related, hunger and thirst-related, water, disease, hunger, malnutrition bring disease. Drinking dirty water brings disease. And each day, 3,000 kids die. So in that context, uh, when we drink coffee or clean water, really, what are you doing about this, right? What are you doing about this? Um, 
I love barn notes in the Bible. What? This whole verse is designed to convey the language of severe rebuke for their having grossly perverted the design of the Lord's Supper. Okay? Lord's Supper. Have ye not houses? Do you not know that church of God is not designed? to be a place of feasting and revelry, revelry, nor even a place where the partaker of ordinary meals. Can it be that you will come to the place of public worship and make them the scene of feasting and riot? Wow. Well, he writes, for I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. So now beginning the discourse, a discourse on Lord's Supper. Discourse just means story. Discourse is um, not a command, not doctrinal statement. But can I tell you a story? Come on. Let's, let me tell you a story. Well, you know about this, right? Yeshua brought bread to the table. Aramaic Bible says that our Lord Yeshua in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And what does he do? You know, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, it always says, Matthew, all three gospels says, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, spoke a blessing and broke it and gave it to the disciples and saying, take and eat, this is my body. And in the movies, it's usually, you know, it's large bread, uh, but probably in real life was a very small individualized bread and it was unleavened, so it breaks it, not rips it, breaks it. It wasn't this big, it was thin, he breaks it and said, this is my body broken. That's why he said blessing and broke the bread. How do you break the bread, right? How do you break the wonder bread? It just was, Thin, thin bread. And basically the point is that this is my body. This is my body. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance, in remembrance of me or for the commemoration <clears throat> commemoration of me and or do this in memory of me remember is basically recollection um, I spent three weeks in Korea and to, today's the last day after this I'll be going to Incheon airport you know how, how I was sitting down because I did so many stuff in just three weeks, trying to remember. Okay, what was the first thing I've done? And then, <laughs> thank God I had my calendar spelled out, written, and my diary, what I felt, and also logging in to my daily gospel. You know, I'm gonna go back and I'll be so shocked. Um, just three weeks ago that I don't remember. That's why Jesus, gave this to us, basically saying that, do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup and they, in the like manner, also the cup after supping, <laughs> they call it supping, but English, huh? old English. Uh, in, in this manner, the cup supping and saying, this cup is like new covenant in my blood. Do this often as you may drink it to the remembrance of me. Wow. When you have supper, do you do for yourself only? Or do you remember others? The point is, Jesus says that I'm dying for you. I'm shedding blood for you, that you may do that to each other. That's the message. And so we're, I'm going to, um, maybe present Kierkegaard's book on Lord's Supper, Remembering Lord's Supper, 
and maybe chapter by chapter. Um, that would be very, very helpful for us to reflect on the essence of what the Lord's Supper is. Amen? Um, maybe I will see you tomorrow in America. <laughs> Lord bless you guys. Love you. See you tomorrow. Mwah.